Well, wonderful. I'd like you to bow to your neighbor. That's the person nearest you, not your partner. And now bow to your partner. Fantastic. This is social dancing. There are some niceties that one must observe from time to time. So. Okay. Well, let's see. I have, I have a number of things that, that I'd like to ask. And, okay. and, and the most pressing one is that one of the biggest complaints I get from dancers about callers is they take too long for their walkthroughs. Um, they, they do two walkthroughs. Um, sometimes the dancers don't even get them with the two walkthroughs, right. and, and the teaching is just slow and inefficient. And, and you've told me before about your teaching and how much you actually work, I mean, counting words and stuff like that. So I would love to hear your, just your approach on teaching the dances. Okay. You know. yeah. Well, teaching is the largest part of what we do as callers. A lot of people think it's calling the dance, but that's, we have to teach so we can call. <laughs> And um, I find that dancers have a limited amount of time that they're willing, stuff that they can hear. And um, my goal is always one walkthrough. But that means I have to be really prepared to understand the dance and how to teach it. So in my early days, um, I was a potter. And I would, I would taped everything that I, every dance I went to. I taped the teaching, I taped the calling, um, I danced. And then I would sit in my studio and throw pots all day, and I would listen to those recordings, and I'd go, gosh, that didn't make sense when they said it that way. Now, how would it make sense? So I, I picked apart and analyzed everything. Because I was on the floor, I was dancing, so I could remember, well, that, that didn't work. What would have worked? And so I learned how to refine the words that I used and what order to give directions in. Because if you say swing, your partner. <laughs> There's too much time between things. People don't know who they're doing what with. So you have to put them in an order that makes sense. Who you're doing something with, what you're going to do with them, where you end up. That's pretty much the most important part. Do that again? Yeah. Who you're doing it with, what you're doing with them, and where you need to end. So as an example from some simple dance, if you're doing the walkthrough. Mm -hmm. From the beginning of the dance? To yeah, just... you kind of do the walkthrough now. Okay. Yeah, just how you, those points would be illustrated. All right, what All right. so, and, and also giving them information about who they're facing or where they're going. So, I always start a walkthrough out with, face your neighbor, this is the direction you're traveling. Now, I've had dancers say to me, why do you tell us which way we're going? We know which way we're going. Because I know that at the end of the walkthrough, if they haven't taken a second to say, this is the way I'm going, chances yeah. are they're not going to know where they're going. Right. And it's silly, and we should know this, and we can do it for ourselves, but most people don't. So face your neighbor. This is the direction you're traveling. So here's, here's a dance. Um, Roll in the Hay by Roger Diggle. Easy dance. We've all done it a million times. Face your neighbor. Circle to the left. Go all the way around until you're on the side with your neighbor. With your neighbor, swing. And that's when facing across, join hands in a circle. Circle to the left three places around till you're on the side with your partner. With your partner, swing. And that's when facing across, take hands in long lines. In long lines, go up to the middle and back. And the two ladies change places with the ladies' chain. Trade places with the ladies' chain. Face across. You're with your neighbor on the side of the set. Your goal is to get back to where you are right now. You're going to weave a hay for four all the way over and all the way back. Ladies, start passing right shoulder in the center, left shoulder on the side, all the way over, all the way back to get back to where you started that hay, face the direction you're traveling, on to the next. So there you go. Everything you need in one walkthrough. Part of the, part of the agreement we make with dancers is that the dancers have to listen to the walkthrough. But when the tradition becomes, we'll walk it through it. We always walk things through two times. It means the dancers don't have to listen to the walkthrough the first time because there's going to be another walkthrough. So a lot of times when I go to new communities, I'll have to tell them what my philosophy is about walkthroughs, which is that the walkthrough is simply to get the idea of the dance, not to perfect it. I believe that every dance can be taught with one walkthrough. But your part as a dancer is that you have to listen to the one walkthrough, because I'm going to give you all the information you need to know in that one walkthrough. So my goal is one walkthrough. And, I, and if I lay it out there, I can usually get away from two walkthroughs pretty quick. 
Oh, that's super. Unless this week, last weekend, I called it a dance where there was only about 25 or 30 people there. It was a small dance. They only dance once a month. There are only about three or four dancers there that had any kind of dance experience at all. So there were lots of beginners. And I found that I, I did need to walk throughs with those people because it made them comfortable. But if I had had more experienced dancers, I could have totally gotten away with one walkthrough. Well, and, so. and I think that's the audience that we're working for um, right. at the Gray Eagle. We have people that want to dance. Oh, yeah. They want to get dancing. And if there's yeah. enough experienced dancers to carry the new people, here's another thing I've learned in all of my years of calling. Yeah. The more I talk, the less people listen. So, if I'm talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, the experienced dancers are saying to themselves, I wish she'd just shut the heck up and call the dance. So do I have their attention? No. The beginners, on the other hand, if I'm talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, all they hear is blah, 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 and their head is saying, this must be really hard, she's talking a lot. Have I accomplished anything by talking a lot with them? Not really. So if I just tell them where they, how they need to recover, and I fly with it and take care of them, they're going to get it, and they're going to have fun. And it's not going to be this big, got to do it right before the music starts. Because that's, I think, where callers fall into a trap, that there's this idea that it should be perfect when the music starts. It's not going to be perfect when the music starts. Part of the fun is, it's a work in progress and it becomes what it becomes because of all of the energy that we all bring to it. It's, it's not got to be a performance piece when the music starts. Does that make sense? Oh, perfect. Yeah. But yeah, if we perfect. walk it to death, we've lost the magic that can come in creating it together. Yes. No, that... It's not performance, it's participation. Yeah. And it's not always perfect. Right. And that's okay. <laughs> so. No, that's, that's, that's super stuff. Does that answer your question? I used to count words, I did count words for a while, trying to be really concise, but now I more pay attention to what works. And I've been known to say something new that really clicked, and I pull out my little notebook that I keep on stage uh -huh. and I'll write it out. Uh -huh. For instance, I used to say things like, okay everybody listen up, it's time for the walkthrough, listen up, please, you know, I would be begging for attention. And one time I said, it's time to listen. And everybody got ready to listen. <laughs> and some people even went, shh, shh, it's time to listen. And I went, what? <laughs> really? And I don't say it that way all the time. But it's with that in mind that what had I done? So I analyzed it. What did I do that made people listen? I told them what it was time to do. I didn't say, listen up, listen up, hey y'all, mm -hmm. listen up, you know, yeah. it's time to listen. There's no arguing with that. And part of that is also giving them time to talk between the dances, because it is social dancing, after all. Right. It's not, you know, you got to give them time to say hello and take hands for and talk to the people in their minor set before you start getting their attention to dance. It's not, you don't have to give them a lot of time, but you have to give them some time so that then they can give you your attention, the attention. Okay.
if you don't get it quite right the first time, you get to do it again. Do it again, up to the middle and back. And then two ladies are going to change places with the ladies' chain. That's a right 